please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Isn't this just fantastic? Hello everyone, welcome to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we're going to start with Megan, Megan, Megan. It looks like Megan, but it's with an A in where it shouldn't be. Paul, a police officer that I've been holding on to sources for for a while because they're a bit of an idiot. A bit of an idiot, but then so is the state involved in this, or the city that they come from. Here is the Cliffs Notes of this person. They shagged an entire police department. That can be condensed down to one word, four letters, one syllable, rhymes with mutt. In January of 2023, Megan Hall was fired from her job after it was discovered she had had sexual relationships with several cops in the suburban Nashville department, some of who were terminated, others suspended. Megan Hall, a rookie cop at the time, hit back with a federal lawsuit claiming she was G-R-O-O-M-E-D and A-B-U-S-E-D by lecherous superiors, including the police chief Burrell Chip Davis, two last names and a crappy nickname, and Sergeant Lewis Powell, who was a 15-year law enforcement veteran. The city of La Vergne, if that's the mispronunciation, I don't care, ended up launching an internal inquiry after a whistleblower came forward to report that Megan Hall was having relationships with multiple male colleagues and even on police property. So essentially, she a slag, slept around, and claimed foul. That same inquiry and investigation found that this was in fact true. When interviewed, Megan said she played games of strip uno, exchanged foot fetish photos, and played out wife-swapping sessions with fellow officers. During one interview, quote from Megan Hall, I got stupid, I got desperate. I guess and guys are guys, and they'll stick their dick in anything. Yes even when it becomes sloppy sevenths. While discussing the affair with Powell, she said at one point they had carried out sex acts on police property, quote, I just gave him a blowjob in the substation, me and my husband were kind of on the verge of a divorce, and I just cracked, and then it just kind of got out of hand. Of course it did. It wasn't in your hands, it was in your mouth. Those that lost their jobs included Hall, Powell, Patrol Officer Juan Lugo, Detective Seneca Shields, Sergeant Ty McGowan, and eventually the police chief, who led the inquiry. Oh, that's amusing. McGowan was the source of the original whistleblower tip, received by Laverne Mayor Jason Cole's office. Two officers from a canine unit were also suspended. In the aftermath was when Hall claimed she had been sexually G-R-O-O-M-E-D by her predator superiors, and that she had tried to commit Sudoku. If you know what I mean by that, congratulations. If you're gonna be pedantic, go F yourself. Maybe Megan should have done that instead. Megan didn't help herself in this situation while claiming foul because she had told all those officers, and it was proven to be true, that she was in an open marriage with her husband, Jedediah. And yes, that is his name, J-E-D-I-D-I-A-H. That's not a name, but apparently it is. However, her husband, the marriage of which was on the rocks, was not in favour of getting with her and these guys as well, all of whom were built considerably larger than him. No doubt an insecurity for one fairly obvious reason would have come to the surface. Some of these officers are in fact now suing the city. They are suing the city because some were fired, others were not. Some of those that weren't were white, whereas those that were fired were all African American. Which doesn't make the city of Le Vergne look very good now, does it? But we're not done. While they're suing for damages of up to $3 million, at a Le Vergne board meeting, they voted 3-1 in favor of settling the lawsuit with Megan Hall, meaning she will receive $500,000 in damages, along with court costs being included, attorney fees and expenses paid out by the city's insurance. This is so that the city itself does not actually charge the taxpayer for any of this absolute nonsense. Nonsense being the fact that somehow they don't have to say sorry, which they shouldn't in the first place, and Megan Hall gets a half a million pound dollar, sorry, settlement that she shouldn't be getting for being a slag, which she is. They should have allowed this to be dragged out because it would have been funnier to see someone justify banging eight different guys, costing everyone their jobs by banging them on police property, whilst claiming she was G-R-O-O-M-E-D, even though she admitted 
that she set some of this up and was trying to do it with her husband as well. Remembered you on the rocks. No, that's not a good enough excuse. You cannot claim fragility because of emotional distress owing to your marriage deteriorating as justification for you being a slack. Essentially that. We don't make it a point here to slut shame, but I'm going to read a couple tweets, yeah? One from Count Dankula. The city owes her that, did a whole R city F her. And Keemstar, I think this is fair. She blew everyone at the police station and didn't even get a promotion. I'll be honest here. While I'm sure Megan Hall is a delightful person, the point of the police is to protect and serve. There is no version of this where that statement is supposed to translate to wear protection and serve cock. Half a million, huh? I hear in this day and age it doesn't go very far, so good luck with that. Moving on, Gamergate 2.0 is picking up some steam. This is leading to a number of people, a number of companies, a number of creators calling people out, calling establishments out, calling Sweet Baby Inc. out, and those that support it. We'll get some tweets related to that soon. Jules Hardy is a BBC gaming presenter and believes the best way for the current discourse surrounding Sweet Baby Inc. to resolve itself would be with, and I'll quote it, a final purge of those players who are critical of the general presence of DEI, which is diversity, equity and inclusion focused consultation companies within the gaming industry or video gaming industry. Quote from Jules Hardy on Twitter. Can we agree that for round two of this, it can be the final purge of these kind of gamers? It's 2024. I've been arguing about this for decades. Can we have a last full detox of these dude so we can get back to the positive gaming community we have been creating. Reply, when nerd hobbies stop being trendy, you'll be the first to leave. Jules reply, I've been here longer than you, so dot dot dot. Another reply, psst, we were here first, you tourist. Reply, I highly doubt that. In truth, I've heard nothing of Jules Hardy up until this point. Not even a joke. They certainly weren't active during the original Gamergate, so it is certainly understandable when many people call them out for not being as present or prominent when they themselves believe they were, but no one's heard of them. This post about a final purge has since been deleted. Way to stick to your guns, eh? But then again, you work for the BBC and you're not supposed to be inserting yourself into things on a side. Well, the BBC do anyway because they're biased as feck and obligatory defund the BBC. Because honestly, why should the taxpayer continue to pay for their trite shite. Now the post that Jules was retweeting came from Black Gamer Girls that was also deleted and it said, we got you really pressed by just existing, lol. We've never worked with Sweet Baby Inc. You all saw Black and consulting and decided that we all work together, sounds like racism. We're not stopping, so have fun, which was them retweeting GTA, who had said, Black Girl Gamers, you wanted to defend Sweet Baby Inc. with all you could possible, well, here is your page because you wanted to finish Sweet Baby in when I know that you both work together on projects and forced DEI is nothing more than racism. As you can see, these kind of things stretch back. I know nothing of the uh, Twitter account that Black Girl Gamers had retweeted, and I still don't know who the hell Julia Hardy is. But since we know they've worked with Will Wheaton once in 2017, which I also didn't know about because that bitch has me blocked, I at least with this know which side of history you're on, because Will Wheaton is a bitch. A soy-filled one at that. Grums on Twitter have been retweeting and tweeting a lot of stuff concerning Jules Hardy. This is how I knew about this. But there are other areas of this to discuss. So just before we move on to that, I'll mention Grums' tweets of relevance. First, the blonde hair blue-eyed BBC gaming presenter would like to talk to you about her final purge to the gaming problem. She says she created gaming and was here first and you have to leave now. If not, she and her friends will bake pies out of you. I like that a lot of those, like Jules Hardy, like to speak as if they come from a position of authority, which is called a fallacy, an appeal to authority fallacy. Oh, I was here first. I doubt you all were. I'm just going to espouse it though and assert it as if it's true. I doubt that to be the case. Mostly because, and I had to go to your Wikipedia to find this out, you've only really been known in the gaming community since 2015. Gamers go back a lot longer than that, Betch. But let's insert other people in this. We have Irina Pereira, who had tweeted, Just wait until they notice that none of our starting characters in our alpha build are white males, none out of six. Reply, imagine if you wrote black males, how would that look? Equality, not equity. Reply, considering that 95% of video game characters are white and male, a poor representation of the diversity of actual players 
I thought it would be a fun experiment. We started with all female characters. Now this is an interesting comment, especially when you look at the demographic representation of a gaming industry that has players roughly in the ballpark of 3.24 billion. This should help you when it comes to representation. For example, in 2022 in America alone, 71% of gamers were Caucasian. The largest gaming community is China. So if you want to be pedantic or appeal to your larger market, you might want to consider where your game appeals the most, who's going to buy your game, and perhaps consider the representation aspect of that. If you are solely doing something based on race, there's a word for it. it starts with R and ends with Acism. And others are right to point out that equity is not equality. Therefore, you are no longer pushing equality. You are solely pushing representation by tokenizing a skin color. You're trivializing it as well, to be honest. Just so you know who Irina Pereira is, they are a former Blizzard developer. Do I need to say any more about this person? Because Boogie's been on quite the crusade on Twitter, I'm going to read two tweets from Boogie that are relevant to this discussion. The first, hot take. I mean this one too, no walking it back. I did a little research and as far as I can tell, the majority of video games are still purchased by white men. Even after 10 years of forced DEI representation, it didn't make a significant change in the demographics. I proved that early and I'll link it down below. So if you want to represent DEI stuff, fine, go for it. But also make games that represent the people who actually buy your games as well. Following this up with, here is the research I'm referring to. I am largely excluding Eastern gamers for this tweet as Eastern game designers in general don't bend the knee to DEI and ignore that nonsense. And he does include the very information I was referencing earlier. It's all well and good pushing DEI, but if it hasn't led to any significant change in the layout or the landscape where these markets are relevant, all you're doing is virtue signaling to make it seem like you are good, but in reality, you're not. You are the very thing you claim to be against. I don't support DEI if it's forced. If it happens organically, which it can happen organically, then that's fine. It really is. Nothing about Sweet Baby Ink is fine. And those that support it, like Jules Hardy, are frauds. You're a presenter at best. A presenter of bias because you work for the BBC. Your credibility is shot the moment you work for them. And associate with Will Wheaton. And Irina Pereira? Bitch, you worked for Blizzard. You have no leg to stand on. Recently, Nike announced the new England football shirt, which on the back of it, where the collar resides, is the St George's Cross. We English are very proud of our St George's Cross flag. In England, though, we're not allowed to show it as much in favour of the Union Jack, because while the Welsh flag is fine, the Scottish flag is fine, the Northern Irish flag is fine, the English one is typically considered racist. It isn't. The England shirt on the front, the emblem, is the three lions, which baffles me to this day, with one star above it denoting our one-time victory in the World Cup. The St George's Cross being on it is a wonderful addition of national pride. Many countries have their flag on their shirt. This is the new shirt. The St George's Cross is red with a white backdrop. That is what the flag is. This has been launched ahead of the Euro 2024 tournament. As you can tell though, it isn't the St George's Cross because it's not just red. It has what appears to be a pride flag aspect to it, which has caused a bit of a storm. Many do not appreciate this because it is not what they say it is. If you're going to respect the flag of a country, you need to put that respect on the logo, respect what it is and represent it fairly and accurately. By changing it, you're making it seem like something else, something which has annoyed the oikery that would want to buy that shirt. I do not want to buy that shirt. Nike has said the shirt is a playful update to the cross to unite and inspire. Politicians in the United Kingdom have called on the company to change the design. That would include the Prime Minister of the Conservatives and the leader of the Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer. Nike have said that the design was to celebrate the 1966 World Cup team. Quote, it was never our intention to offend. The FA, who is the um, governing body for English football, have said that it understood what the flag means to our fans and it will be displayed prominently at Wembley tomorrow as it always is. I'll be honest, if you want more people to buy your shirt, you need to remove things like that that can be considered disrespectful. As if the price tag of £125 for adults and 120 for children isn't extorted enough. An outspoken critic of this would include actor Lawrence Fox. Many of you have undoubtedly heard of him and have opinions on this individual. Lawrence Fox told Nike to leave our flag alone 
and addressed a group of protesters outside Downing Street. 50. This protest is to instigate a, what's it called, a boycott of Nike. Fun fact though, when announcing this boycott, he was wearing Nike. If you want to announce a boycott, at least wear something that isn't the very brand you're trying to stand against. In response to this uh, flag debacle, a UK flag maker called Newton Newton Flags have created their own version of the US flag in response. Here it is. The thing here is, if that was made by a US company, I can promise you the vast majority of Americans would hate it. It looks alright to be honest, but only because it resembles the very thing that it is meant to be, but the colours have been ruined, and that would annoy a lot of people who take great pride in their national identity and the flag is very key to that and Americans won't like it. The English flag is a white flag with a red cross on it. Simple as that. Nice and simple, very basic. Gareth Southgate, the manager of the England football team, tried to downplay this by saying the only thing that really mattered were the three lines on the front. And that it should also be pointed out, in the past, things have been done to change the shirt in the past. It's happened. Of course it has. The difference between now and then is that social media is now more prominent, so the response is going to be more volatile because it can be considered insulting and a besmirchment of what the English national identity is and our flag is important to us. I know there are going to be many England folk that are going to disagree with me there because you don't care. Truth be told, I'm fairly indifferent as well, but I do think if you're going to include the English flag on a kit, it should be the English flag and not an alternative version of just a cross. Regardless of the argument, it is as to whether it celebrates the 1966 World Cup team during the Euros, which is not the same competition in the slightest. On to the final subject. We're now going to talk about Pearl Davis. I am certain there are many within the online space know about the current goings on between Jared Monroe and Steven Crowder and undoubtedly have an opinion. I don't, because I am going to wait until I am certain enough information is out because I'm not entirely sure where I sit. I do know a lot of people don't like what Steven Crowder has done. I know now a lot of people don't like what Jared Monroe is doing. Pearl Davis has inserted herself into the conversation and it has started a back and forth with Sydney Watson and the quarter ring and blonde in the belly of the beast or just blonde I believe these days. And I thought, let's read the tweets and see what we think. Now Jared Monroe had tweeted out a video. I did not want to do this. FreeJaredMonroe.com, hashtag FreeJaredMonroe, hashtag free speech matters. Now I remember Jared, I think. Didn't they used to feature on Louder with Crowder? Pearl Davis retweeted this with an image of another tweet to Hillary Crowder, who was like a sister to me, I love you and I'm here for you. And she, Pearl Davis says, you guys are not going to understand till later, but I will bet money this is orchestrated by the ex-wife. There are details missing. Why was he sent the original cease and desist? Now he's asking for donations. Something is not adding up. Pearl Davis doesn't help herself with her career because she is a well-known woman hater. A lot of the time with what she talks about though, it comes from a place of deflection and cope. Because while she likes to rag on those that are single, those that don't have children, that are older, those who seem to lack purpose in their life, Hot Kettle Black Her. Sydney Watson retweeted this by saying, Pearl, shut the actual F up. You've been here in our space for two seconds and don't know poop from clay. We all know you're taking money to relentlessly come after Hillary, knowing full well she can't defend herself, back the F off. The situation concerning Hillary Crowder and Stephen Crowder is quite muddy, murky, and honestly, with the video, it hasn't helped Stephen in the slightest. It's a messy situation that I don't want to talk about, because I'm not entirely sure who's right. Pearl replied, I bet you a $5 super chat that I'm right. The quartering. Since I called out free speech advocate and total defender of men, pearly things, she blocked me. I would love the chance to discuss with her how she totally loves men, men's rights, and just wants the best for men. My rather large platform is open if she has the stones. He accompanies this with proof that he has been blocked. Blonde, when I listen to Pearl talk, I'm convinced she is that word. Then I remember that despite being unattractive, she got hundreds of thousands of men to listen to her, give her money to support her girl boss life, and support her in her decision to never marry because it is out of solidarity and totally not because she's unmarriageable. Slow clap for the greatest feminist grift of all time. She may just be a genius. The funny thing about this entire situation is we can only speculate. We can only pick a side if we want to pick a side. There are those though that have taken a side because they've invested time into it. 
When it comes to Pearl, most of the time I can never be convinced she's given it more than a glancing view, akin to that of somebody perusing an article for a video and not actually bothering to pay attention to the words written on the screen. In this instance, we commentary folk have to pick our battles very carefully, not because of who it's against, but because this is actually quite a horrid situation for all parties. Now I know The Quartering has made a video on this and he now stands with Steven Crowder. Time will tell whether or not that is correct or not. I just wanted to point at Pearl and go, you don't help yourself by hating women all the time because it's all you ever do. It makes you look like a grifter. It really does.